I'm Melissa King. I've been on a couple times. <laughs> I was on season 12, Boston, and also Top Chef All Stars, season 17. Melissa, you are Top Chef. <laughs> It's been quite a year, you know, and I think professionally, the quarantine has actually inspired me to do a lot of different things with my career that I never thought to do, like creating a merch line, creating hot sauces, just finding ways to really connect people with my food. I think a lot of it was evolving this year. I think that was the motto this year, was like, learn how to evolve. But it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot, let's be real. <laughs> We need a break here. <laughs> I just want to say how excited we are to have all of you at the table with us. I remember I got the call from the producers and I see, I see Top Chef light up on my phone and I start panicking again because I thought they wanted me to compete. <laughs> I've retired from the game, I'm done. <laughs> I've already won, I'm moving on. I mean, I gotta be real, I feel less stressed on this side of the table. I think it's such a great way for us as former competitors to be able to um, give the right advice to these younger chefs to kind of help mentor them through the game because we know how it feels. This game will get in your head, but you gotta stay confident and stay true to yourself. I'm really looking for the person that's gonna embrace these challenges and really feel inspired by them. I do appreciate that they were telling their story here of who they are and where they come from. I think a lot of this competition is growth. It's not just being a great chef from day one, it's how do you evolve through that process? How do you evolve from challenge one to challenge 14? So I hope that we see that development and we really see them blossom into a really amazing chef. I'm Brooke Williamson. I was on season 10. I came in second behind Kristen Kish, and then I ended up winning season 14. And that was the last time I competed. I've judged a few times since. Where are all the eggs? I do not miss this chaos. It's hard for me to look at a plate of food and just take it for what it is in this circumstance. If I go to a restaurant, I'm incredibly easy to satisfy. I am not high maintenance when I go out to dinner. I don't pick apart food, but I also don't want a chef to present me with a dish and claim to be someone they're not. It's how you present a dish and, and who you claim to be as a chef that I pay attention to the most. I thought it was a really smart dish. Is there maybe one little thing that I would change about it? Sure. But literally, I could eat this for lunch every day. Honestly, I feel like this Top Chef bubble is probably the safest place on earth right now. Out of quarantine, happy to be here. Out of quarantine, <laughs> a little stir crazy? Uh, you know, it was, it was some really nice, peaceful time to myself, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in the grand scheme of things, this Top Chef experience is definitely not the strangest one I've ever had. <laughs> All right. Wow! <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, this is awesome. My Top Chef experience has been very well-rounded. I know the disappointment. I know the stress. I know the anxiety. I know the excitement. I know how I feel when I'm cooking in a 20 minute cook. The fact that I have seen so many perspectives really helps me as a judge because I can put myself in their headspace. And I feel like every year that I'm given the opportunity to, to do that, I, I get a little bit better at the job and I'm appreciative for every opportunity that I'm given to do so. Hi there. My name is Kwame Onwachi and I'm from the Bronx, New York. I was on season 13 and I was on a short stint of season 15. Hey Kwame, welcome to Last Chance Kitchen. Good to be back. I see you Kwame. Kwame, Kwame. I see you Kwame. Kwame, this dish is really good. Moho street food almost, and you yeah. completely turned it sophisticated without losing its soul. I did pretty well. I was one of the youngest people on the show, or ever on the show, and I made it far, and I gained lifelong friends. I started as a waiter in your restaurant and craft. When walking into that kitchen, it really showed me what cuisine could be, and I really appreciate you know, everything. Yeah, wow. In four years, you've accomplished a lot. No, I think you can learn in every experience. Being on this side of the judges' table, uh, it gives me a different insight to what critiquing is all about and the responsibility that you have when you are judging someone's food. Just more sauce, a little bit of heat. And more quail. And more quail, more quail. and I think we would have been 
in a really good place here. I think the competition this season is great. You know, I think everyone comes from a diverse background of experience. I think there's a lot of people to watch. I don't like to bet on the horse that everyone else is betting on. You know, I think everyone can step it up at any point in time. Do you guys have any advice for them at all? Don't get in your head, season your food, <laughs> taste your food, and be yourself. You know, put yourself on a plate. We want to see you. They're putting their culture on the plate. They're telling their story through this food. If a dish has a story, it has a soul. And people can resonate with that when they taste the food. So just make sure you're putting your all into this. I'm Richard Blaze. I've been on multiple seasons of the show. As a competitor, being one of the OGs, like I was in season four or eight, like I mean, people weren't, you weren't even born when I was competing on the first time on Top Chef. I'm concerned just hearing about plating times and I ran out of time, you have two hours. In the, in the world of Top Chef, two hours is a lifetime. Just to be clear, I'm not the mean judge anymore because I've judged many episodes of Top Chef and I'm over it, Twitter. I'm over hearing about how I'm the mean judge. I'm over hearing Mary from Kansas about how I was such a nice contestant but I'm such a mean judge. I'm not, I'm the good guy this year, I'm pretty sure. It is so difficult to cook in these kitchens. That's the worst. You, you come in saying, as long as I'm not the first, first person to get yeah. every single time. I'd like to think that I bring a little bit of a lighter note to whatever table I'm sitting at. Respect for serving us claws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Sometimes the gravity can be really, really intense. It is so important and the food is so important. But I do have a very you know, strong philosophy that at the end of the day, it's just food. You all inspire me very, very much. I can't wait to spend how many episodes eating food with you and talking about it. It's great being part of this alumni panel and there's so much strength you know, on this panel. And now I get to learn from them and about them by being friends with them and not just competing with them. So it's been pretty wild. Richard, you are top chef. <laughs> For this cast, this will absolutely change their life. The opportunities that will be you know, in front of them when they get home. And so many of my alumni judges are here to attest to that. You know, they've built empires, they've won awards. That's what it helped provide me. I say the Top Chef turned a staircase into an escalator. So get ready to get on the escalator. It moves fast. But if you don't jump on the escalator at the right time, you fall down. That, like, yeah, that makes sense. Like a treadmill. Have you ever fallen off a treadmill? I'm the only one who's fallen off a treadmill. Okay. <laughs> My name is Amar Santana. I was a finalist on season 13. It was a lot of fun. I guess I did my thing. I went all the way to the end. My most memorable challenge uh, during my season was the time I actually won the challenge, uh, cooking old school French food. I made a squab uh, with tornado vegetables. I remember nice truffle sauce, sear foie gras, sweet breads. It was a flavor bomb. It was, it was so good. You really showed us a lot of technique that couldn't have been done by just anyone. Thank you. When I got the call from Top Chef, the first thing I say when I answer the phone, I was like, please tell me I am not competing. She's like, uh, we want you to be a judge. I was like, I don't have to compete. I don't have to cook. I don't have to run around. I don't have to. She's like, no, no, no. And I'm like, I'm in. I say, just tell me what you need from me. I, I want to do it. It's a great experience just uh, getting to, to do Top Chef from the other side. Getting to know Padman Tom at a different level than you do when you're competing as a chef, you know? I mean, I'm still like that little kid, you know, walking into class for the first day. Every time I see Tom and Padman on set, you know, I, I, I was just recently uh, shooting an episode with her and I was shaking. I didn't even know what to say. I was just nervous. I'm like, I'm doing this next to Padma, right? Like, it just took me back, you know, the first day when I walked into the kitchen of Top Chef and I see Tom and Padma standing there and I'm like, oh my God, this is real. Like, this is Tom and Padma right there. Judging all the food, you know, it, it is a cooking competition. When something is good, I, I'm gonna say it's good. The mushroom had its own flavor, had some citrus. Uh, it was well balanced to me, it was, it was really good. Like the other day, I tried a dish and it was so good, I licked the plate. You know, that's basically letting that person know that this is really freaking good. Hi, I'm Carrie Baird. I was on Top Chef season 15 in Colorado, and I did well. I was a finalist. I took fourth, technically. I would say that I'm best known for making a cake in the snow. We were put into the woods, and I ended up having to dig a little hole and bury my cakes and bake them in the snow. She made an oven <laughs> out of snow. <laughs> Who does that? It was easy. It was not easy. It was not easy. That's what I meant. <laughs> I don't think if I had to recreate that cake, I could do it again. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was sleep deprived. 
but it was a, it was a fun episode. Really, what this comes down to though is we have three pastas, and I think that one was a little lacking. Carrie, please pack your knives and go. You know, you're always like, why did I get sent home? But now that I'm on this side of it, like you get sent home for a bad dish, nothing else. Being a contestant and being judged is so hard. It's so stressful. And you're out there in the lights and the cameras. And for me, being on the bottom, you just kind of go, I just went blank. I remember my heart pounding and my hands sweating. It's a lot to take and you feel really bad about yourself and you're scared you're gonna get sent home. <laughs> And I had my first judge's table last week and I felt really bad. <laughs> it's a sensory overload and these cute contestants, I just want to hug them and tell them it's going to be okay. <laughs> Good job, guys. My name is Dale Taldy. I've been on a lot of the Top Chef shows. <laughs> I feel like I've done like three seasons. I was on Top Chef season four. I came in sixth place. I was on Top Chef season eight All-Stars, came in sixth. And I did Top Chef duels. You know, going from being a competitor to being now a judge, it's definitely a lot less nerve-wracking, but I still have that competitive juice in me. I see these challenges, and they're so fun. I want to get into them. But you know, you gotta like, I feel like I'm on my retirement tour, like I'm on the, the back half of my career when it comes to these competition shows. I could only do like one or two, and then my, like, my back would go out, or my knee would, I'd throw my knee out or something like that. Being a judge, you get a real respect for what Tom, Padma, Gail do. It's not easy. The job is hard, especially when you know it's undecided and, and, and it's not a clear cut winner. It's really hard to send someone who you know misstepped by just a little bit. What we're deciding between is failure by what someone didn't do or failure by what someone did do. The hard one. Yeah. Listen, I think in your mind's eye, you would think you get like seven chefs together and we'd just be like running amok. But we are a little older. I'm single digits top chef, like four and eight. We weren't even double digits yet. I'll let the, I'll let the double digit guys in the teens uh, rage. Let the old guys kind of just, you know, chill out. <laughs> My name is Dina Compton. I was on Top Chef New Orleans and I was the runner up. I was in this, you know, this beautiful house in the French Quarter with all these people, this dynamic group from all over the country, really talented chefs. And I just saw how quickly some of the best chefs got eliminated. I'm like, oh, I could be next. So I'm just gonna live every moment as my best moment. Yes! It was just like open the fridge and just whatever comes to my mind was cook it. So I think I became more creative on the show because I didn't have time to stop and think and overthink things. I think I was just cooking on a whim, which was actually a lot of fun. The pasta is perfect. At this stage of the game, this is how they should be cooking. When you have Tom Kalikyo judge you, any dish that you make, it could be the best dish, but you still cringe because he's like the god. You know, whatever Tom says, like, you worship him. The biggest thing you could ever win is a compliment from Tom Kalikyo. Well, I thought the dish was really well flavored, well seasoned, the turtle was tender. Really nice, nice job. Thank you. Being a judge is, it's, it's amazing. I think my style is flavor first. You know, that is the first thing I'm looking for. I'm thinking I'm looking for balance. I'm thinking of cooking technique, but I'm also trying to understand what their vision was for this dish. I know what it's like when you're cooking in the swamp and you have to construct your own kitchen. Like I have been there, I know what it's like. So you do have a little bit of sympathy towards them, but you can also be like, no, you can do better than that because I've been in your shoes. I think overall he nailed it. And when you taste it, it's just like everything is just very well balanced. So I enjoyed it. I think the great thing about Top Chef, it becomes like this instant family. Now we're judges and we're seeing people like, I've been in those people's shoes. I know it's terrible, it's nerve wracking, it's stressful. So to be on the other side and to share this with, with other people that I really admire is fun.